And I was thinking of the things in the world, of all the chaos in the world, and all the division and the hate. And I began, to, I got my Bible out and I started reading, and the Lord brought it back to my mind that He said, In this world, you're going to have tribulation, but in Him, you're going to have peace and be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. And that just lifted me up today, and I'm so thankful because we have hills we have to climb, valleys we have to go through, rivers that we have to go through, but God is always with us. And when we try to fight our own battle, we lose. But when we're with God, when we let him fight it, we win. And I don't really have a song, but just a paragraph I want to sing, because this is my testimony, how the Lord has helped me through my journey, and it's only about a minute long. And hopefully, I can do it. As I, as I travel, as I look back in this life I travel, I've seen so many times He's carried me through. But there's one thing that I know in my life: my Redeemer is faithful and true. My Redeemer is faithful and true. Everything he has said he will do. Every morning his mercies are new. My Redeemer is faithful and true. And he truly has been merciful and faithful to me. This time, I'm going to ask uh, my sister Tony Spurlock and um, Sister Vicki Mons to come and help us sing. We're going to try to sing How Great Thou Art. And you know, there's nothing greater than Jesus Christ. You know, He has us all in the palm of His hand. I love Him today, and you know, I want to be and I want to do what the Lord will have. You know, He's able to take care of us if we put our faith and our trust in Him. I love you tonight.
ask uh, Brother Josh Short to come up and testimony and whatever the Lord puts in his heart. This time I'd ask uh, Sister Debbie Short to have a testimony or song of the Lord that's on her heart. You know, I, I always want to say I love the Lord and I thank you for letting me be here. I thank you for everything he does for me. Um, this song is God is bigger than you. He is bigger than anything that we can go through. And I just thank you. Bigger than all the shadows that fall across my path. Lord, what do I do wrong? What do I do wrong? 
I said, I know there's something that I've got to be lacking and that I've got to be doing wrong. And he said, communication. And, you know, I thought I'll sit there at the house and, like, if I get to church, I can talk to people. I can, you know, I go out to Walmart, I can talk to a stranger. But at the house, it's like my mind is going 90 mile a minute trying to think what needs to be done, which now I can't do it. But I'm still thinking what I need to do, what this needs to be done. We need to do this. You need to do that. And it's like I don't slow down to communicate and talk to my children the way I should do. And my wife. And God showed me I was lacking, that I needed to communicate. And, you know, I got thinking and got praying. And, you know, like Brother Josh said, we've got to ask. And if we're lacking, it's because we're not asking, Brother Chris. Because God will show us in any way we're lacking if we ask God. I thought we turn in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 through 6. It says, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and to Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among the thorns. You know, fallow ground is ground that's just said, Brother Chris. It's not being used. And you know, a lot of times our mind is fallow. Sister, Sister Vicki, there are things in our mind that, you know, we're not using. There's things hidden there that we need to break up that ground, and we need to let God plant the good seed in there so something can grow. And it says, circumcise yourself to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. Ye men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, Blow ye the tr trumpet in the land. Cry, cry, gather together and say, Assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. Set up a standard towards Zion. Retire. Stay not. For I will bring evil from the north. And of great destruction. Like I said, fallow ground is unplowed. It's ground that not needs to be worked up. And you know, we need to be praying. And you know, I thought a lot of times in our life, everybody we meet, is if you pass a, a glass around, everybody that touches it is going to leave a fingerprint. And you know, I thought, I got thinking and praying about why I couldn't communicate. Why and what caused me to be like that, Brother Chris? And God brought me back to something else. And you know, every time we meet somebody, we leave an impression, just like that fingerprint on that glass. Every time we meet somebody, good or bad, somebody in our life, they leave an impression. Sister Vicki, your dad left an impression in your life. He left a good impression. But there's other people that's left a bad impression. And sometimes that bad impression, it needs to be cleaned off. It's left a mark. And I thought in Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 18 through 20, it says, And they shall come thither, and they shall take away the desolate things thereof, and all abominations thereof from hence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of their flesh. You know, you can't grow anything on stone. It says, and I will give them a heart of flesh. And they may, may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people. And I will be their God. You know, I knew a guy for a long time. And I asked him, I said, how come, you know, you go to church all them years and you're that grouchy? And you're mean. And he said, I guess the Lord just made me that way. God didn't make nobody that way. But somebody in his life, Sister Vicki, has left an impression. And it's left a mark. And he's got to get down and pray and find out what's left that mark in his life so he can fix it. And if we ask what's wrong, if we're honest enough to know and to ask what's wrong, God will show us. A lot of people have bad attitudes, but they're not honest enough with God for God to say, God, what's the problem, God? What's the root of this problem? Show me, God, so I can dig it out and I can break up my fallow ground and I can fix it. People are content being the way they are. Like I said the last time, people have got a set of rules and as long as they follow those rules, they think they're okay. They really don't have a relationship with God. But we need to communicate with God and ask us, and as a loving father, when there's something wrong, 
He wants to tell us what's wrong. He wants to tell us how to fix it and where to start. And it starts with that seed. It says in Mark chapter 16, verse 14 through 15, it says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven, and they sat at meat and upbraided them. You know, he got on with their unbelief and hardness of heart. You know, our heart is our mind. And yet they used to say I was hard-headed. I wouldn't listen. That's hardness of heart. People just won't listen. They're hard-headed. They're set in their ways, and they think, you know, I don't have to change. But, you know, we sat and sang that song. That's my favorite song. And Brother Chris is my favorite one singing that song, How Great Thou Art. You think, if he's really that great, why don't we think that he deserves a better service from us, for us to live a better life, Brother Chris? Like Brother Bill said, he prays for God to show him the things that he's doing wrong so he can stop doing them. And he prays and says, Lord, show me what I'm doing that pleases you so I can do more of it. If he's so great, why doesn't he deserve more of that from us? It says, because they believed not them which had said, seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, he sent us out to spread, to make a good impression, to tell people about him. And this next verse, in Matthew chapter 13, verses 36 through 43 it says, Then Jesus sat with the multitudes away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed is the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. And the enemy that soweth them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. I have to remember where to start back. I got a picture, and I want to show you something. This is a tear, and this is the wheat. You see how light and bright, light and bright the wheat is, and how dark the tear is. But they look almost exactly alike in shape, and they both have. What well, means to be a fruit, the seed there. You know, you think the wheat has a seed, but the tare also has a seed. You know, there's a lot of church people that leave a seed, but it's a tare seed. And it hurts people. People get hurt. And you know, we need to clean that off. And people in the world. So people in the world are leaving a seed in our life, just like the church is, Brother Chris. We can leave a good seed, the world can leave a bad seed. But that seed's going to grow if we leave it in there. If we have, I remember your dad preached the message one time and something happened right after that and it like I was afraid. And Brandy had got hurt. Well, I don't think it hurt her, but that nuts, it had done it to her and it upset me. And I thought, God, please don't let this grow into bitterness. And you know, when something happens, it can plant, it plants a seed. And we got to make sure we dig that up and keep that ground fresh and keep the word of God in it, Brother Chris, so there's not something that comes out bad of it. But, you know, people think, you know, hey, it'll be all right, it'll go away. But we really need to pray that something don't set up, that that seed of that tear don't set up in our life. It says, um, and therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall they be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of the kingdom of heaven that offend, and they which do iniquity. You know, the church world today says that you can sin and still go to heaven, but this says it's going to gather they that sin, they that do iniquity. We're not going to get by, Sister, Sister Lisa, with sin. It says, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. There shall the righteous shine forth as a sun, in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. That means if you have ears to hear, don't harden your heart. Listen. It's Psalms 139, verse 23 through 24. It says, this is what Brother Josh was talking about. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me into the way of the everlasting. 
You know, this is David, a man that's after God's own heart. And said, see if there be anything wicked, wicked way in me. You know, we need to ask God. If we've got bitterness, Brother Chris, we need to ask God and say, God, what's the root of this? What's the seed of this, God? So I can pray and you can help me dig this up and get it out of my life before it grows and turns into something worse. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. You know, I shared something the other day. It says, I'm following my heart, or just follow your heart. And it said, false. Your heart is a deceitful thing. Follow Jesus. Yes. It says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. You know, you think back then, Sister Debbie, they didn't have a King James Version they were carrying around. You know, God spoke to them. It says in 2 Peter that for this prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. These men wrote this down as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. They had to pray and they had to have a relationship with God, Brother Chris. That's how they got the word. You know, the other night, sitting outside, that's how I got my word, was I was praying and I was talking to God. And I asked him what I was like in him, and he showed me. So we have to study not only the word of God, but we have to study about ourselves. You know, when things happen and we get upset, that shows us that there's something in our life that's not right. God, what is that? Show me, God. Search me, God. Show me what's in my life that's not right. Study ourselves. You know, when I go home, Keita laughs at me. He said, why are you watching yourself? Because I said, I'm watching myself. I'm watching my face to see if I look mean, to see if I look approachable, to see if I look like I would be easy to listen to. And you know, sometimes I realize I look mean, and I don't mean to look mean. Brother Chris, it's hard to talk style to talk about sin. You know, study ourself. How we act toward people. How do I act around my family? How do I act around people I work with? How do I act when I come to church? Do I act right? Well, I act good with Sister Tony and Brother Chris. I may not act as good with. But why do I not act as good with Brother Chris? What, what's in me that, that's rubbing wrong with Brother Chris? And God will show us. Well, people can just continue to wallow in sin and let that stay there. And it's going to grow up into something else. But, you know, if we love God and we love one another, Brother Chris, we're going to ask God, what's in there? Show me, Lord, what's wrong? And he will. It says, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. And he said, and watch unto prayer. Watch unto prayer. You know, we need to watch. We watch. We'll see what we need to pray about. We'll see that we get aggravated with our kids too easy. Ouch, amen. You know, we'll see that, you know, if somebody's riding behind our bumper, you know, people talk about getting upset driving. We'll see that we've got a problem people getting on our bumper. We see what, what triggers us. When we see it, when we watch, we see we need to pray. And you know, God shows us these things, but we just, we got to look. we got to be receptive. It says... In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 9, it says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You know, Jesus is the door. He knocked on the door. You know, a lot of these name that claim it, big prosperity churches preaches that this is a house, this is a car, this is this, this is that. But, you know, if we ask God what we're lacking, God, what am I lacking that's going to keep me out of heaven? God, what am I lacking that's causing me to, to hurt people in my church? God, what's, what am I lacking that's causing me to upset people at my work? What am I lacking, God? Ask. You know, he'll show us, Sister Vicki. God don't want us to make mistakes. He says, ask, and it shall be given unto you. The other night I asked him, Lord, what, what have I done? What am I failing as, as a father? And I, I'm going through and I'm thinking the things I've done right. And he told me what I've done wrong, what I needed to work on. It ain't always easy to see when he tells you, but he will tell you. It says, for everyone that asks, receiveth. He says he'd not withhold one good thing from us. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Well, what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, 
will he give him a stone? So that man that said he was grouchy and God made him that way. So the problem is he's just not asking, Sister Tony. He's not asking God what the problem is, why he's acting like that. Because God wants us to be happy. God wants us to have joy. Because he said the joy of the Lord is our strength. It says in 2 Corinthians 13 through 5, I'm almost done. It says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Now this wasn't wrote to sinners. This was wrote to the church. I need to examine myself, whether I be in the faith. You know, everybody wants to point these verses to people that ain't living right or don't do it right or ain't in the faith. But this book was wrote to the church of Jesus Christ. It was wrote to God's church. It says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. You know, I can't prove you, Sister Vicki. You've got to prove your own self. I've got to prove my own self. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. You know, we've got to examine ourselves. We've got to watch ourselves. We've got to examine our lives to see and ask God, God, is there anything in me that's displeasing to you? In John 5.39, it says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are which that testify of me. You know, this goes out to people that may not have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the Jews, they were here. The gospels are still under the law. The church hadn't begun yet. There was nobody in the church yet. It says, search the scriptures. Under the law, they had to go back. And the law testified of the Messiah. It testified of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. It testified in receiving the Holy Ghost. It said, search the scriptures. I'm asking you today, if you've not obeyed Acts 2.38, search the scriptures in it to see if you have eternal life. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. You know, it's not a think thing. We've got to know. I know that I have eternal life if I keep going because I've repented of my sins. I've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. That was God's plan of salvation. And I'm trying to live a holy life. I'm pressing. I'm moving toward the mark. And the plan of salvation, it was down in Acts chapter 2, verse 38 through 39. It says, then repent. Then Peter said unto them, repent. That makes, makes change. You know, say you're sorry. Pray until you get through and you tell God you're sorry. You change. It says, and be baptized, every one of you. Not just the apostolic people, not just the Pentecostal people. Everybody in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. They said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is what they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The plan of salvation hasn't changed. But you know a lot of us can get tied up on Acts 2.38 and say well I've obeyed the plan of salvation. But are we obeying Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 1 John. Are we obeying them? Jude. Are we obeying Revelation? Are we obeying those books? Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. You know there's a whole lot after we get in the church. We've got to search ourselves. And if we search ourselves God will show us if we're lacking. And if we don't, it's our own fault. If I don't, it's my fault that I didn't see that sooner, that I didn't get serious sooner and ask God what I was doing wrong. If you ask, God will show you. If you think you have eternal life, ask God. Ask God if you need to obey Acts 2.38. God will show you the same way he did with me. I was in a church preaching that there was three gods. I asked God, what do I need to do? God showed me first that he was just one God, and his name is Jesus Christ. Then he showed me I need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. I was a deacon of my church and still didn't have the Holy Ghost, still wasn't baptized correct, and I didn't even know who God was. And then after I got baptized, he showed me that I needed to have the Holy Ghost. I told everybody I had the Holy Ghost. I'd say I was a apostolic. You know, I'm happy I got the Holy Ghost. I didn't have the Holy Ghost because I never spake in tongues. You know, I'll tell you what my pastor told me said there's more for you you know just keep praying until this is over we can all assemble and you know when this is over if you ain't got a place to go we'd be glad to have you here that's it love you guys